everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Survival from Python's World. On the 82nd episode, guys, and can I just say a massive thank you for all of the support you guys have been showing this channel recently. I apologize, I actually had a little bit of time off on the weekend that just passed, and that is because I've been sorting out some house stuffs in terms of, you know, cleaning the current house and getting some paperwork done for the new house. Yeah, I I'm still in the process of buying a house, and uh, yeah, I always knew that buying a house, the, the process in which you buy a house has always been, you know, a lot longer and a little bit more sort of tedious than just renting a house, but yeah, anyways, uh, mini update done. Guys, we're going to get back in today's episode, and yeah, we are going to do a little bit of work on the tree farm, my friends. Not only are we going to do a little bit of work on the tree farm, but we are also... Ladies and gentlemen, going to introduce a brand new major project area. Now, what I would call a major project area is something like Flora Valley. Something we spent the first 25 episodes of the series working on. Python Industries, I would call this a major project that we have been and will continue to be working on. But guys, since the mansion is pretty much done, aside from the courtyard, I thought that maybe as one door closes maybe another one opens. So yeah, that is right, my friends. Later on in the episode, we are going to be showcasing to you, or I am going to be showcasing to you, where we're going to be building a brand new settlement. Because I know that some of you guys have been itching for a brand new settlement to be built. And you know what? Oh, gosh. Hello. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Good day to you, as I, you know, break my voice. Good day. Hello. Go on, get wrecked. Okay, so... Goal numero uno. I would like to go ahead and replace all of this dirt with stone slabs. I think that'd be a very, very nice idea. All right, guys. So check it out. A little bit of a progress update to say that all of the one by one tree compartments have had their floors replaced and or put in. So yeah, as you can see, we've got the birch one done. We've got the acacia one done. And uh, now obviously what we need to do is do the back sections, which include the dispensers with the water buckets. Now, of course, we're not going to go ahead and have this uh, lever here. We are in fact going to have like a universal switch which we you know switch you know whether it be a lever or something and then all of the water will come down and then they'll all go down to the various different hoppers that'll be going on uh talking of hoppers we need some so that's about we have a little bit of a look around inside of here have we managed to get much produce I'm rather hoping so, obviously. Hey, a nice little amount there we do have ourselves some iron blocks in here as well so that's always nice uh Oh! Hello! What? Uh, okay! Wait, well, we got a- we got a casual iron golem rolling around! How the heck- I'm so confused right now, like, how- how is he even here? What? I- I'm so confused! <laughs> what? What? How is he there? I, I do not understand. I do not understand. Anyway, so let's get all these hoppers in. We need to make them all face into each other, uh, centering on here and then going into the chest, of course. Uh, of course, we could put down another couple chests uh, just down here. Oh, there's a bit of a, a thing going on there. A little bit of sandstone, because, of course, this was a beach. So, yeah, that's a thing. And, yeah, like I say, we're going to try and figure out this universal redstone uh, water switch. I think probably the easiest way of doing this would be to have, like, a redstone torch below or something. I mean, this is the wall, right? Maybe we could have, like, a solid section of the wall so we can have redstone go underneath. Because, in my opinion, that's going to be the only way we could do this. Hmm. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to try and figure this out. Alrighty, guys. I mean, I'm I'm no redstone expert. I'm going to tell you guys that straight off the rip. But I'm pretty happy with what I've got going on so far, my friends. Uh, I've actually got a button here just so I can show you guys the, uh, you know, the proof of concept, as it were. We've got three areas which are all going to be full of water. So we've got this is the second section. And, of course, the third section is actually already done. Here's the redstone, my friends. Very, very simple. So the repeaters not only are going to go this way, but are also going to go that way to activate the 2x2 two two tree area uh, water dispenser things. So yeah, we've got the water buckets inside of the dispensers. We've got the redstone going into the block beneath because apparently that also somehow powers it. And then all we've got to do is uh, transmit the power from this side over to this side, which of course is done via a repeater. And then of course you just sort of rinse and repeat the process. Goes into the block below and then a repeater comes out and once again finally goes into the final section there. So ladies and gentlemen, if I give this thing a bit of a whirl, whoo! All right, it is very laggy. 
It is very, very laggy. I don't know whether this is a like 1.13 problem in that it's really poorly optimized, but I don't, I don't really know to be honest with you. But as you can see, all three water sources are going. All right, guys. So check this out. I have made a bunch of progress since the last cut, my friends. As you can see, we have all of the different representative type of leaves in each of these uh, compartments. So we got oak here, we've got a case here, we've got birch, we've got dark oak, jungle, and of course spruce. And I've also so gonna head out and have linked up all of the redstone and indeed done the floors in all of the compartments as you can see here now there are two water dispensers in each of the two by two areas because i kind of figured that that would actually work a little bit better and to be honest with you guys it kind of does i mean all we can do is give it a little bit of a whirl so here is the universal switch for this thing prepare for immense lag ladies and gentlemen this is going to turn into a powerpoint slideshow Woo! oh Baby, look at that frame rate, though. Seven frames per second. Oh my gosh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Not really. Reminds me of the extremely old days of me playing Minecraft. Wait, hang on a minute. What's going on over here? Why, why you no go? Oh, well, that would, that would help, wouldn't it, ladies and gentlemen? I'm, I'm <laughs> silly idiot. I mean, come on, man, Python. You're supposed to be able to do these things and not mess up almightily so, like a nincompoop. Jeez, man. Right, uh, well, I'm gonna have to retract this, put the water in, and then try it again, huh? Oh, God. PowerPoint slideshow again. Oh! Ah, you see? That's a lot better, ladies and gentlemen. Not only that, but the water actually goes on top of the hoppers as well. It's not really significant because, well, I mean, the water kind of goes there anyway, so... Yeah, not really too much to worry about there. As long as all of the items can go in the hoppers, then all is well. Yes! Fantastic. All right. So as you can see, I've also decided to make a little bit of a start on trying to uh, decorate these compartments just a little bit. As you can see, I'm trying to start replacing the dirt. Wait, that sentence didn't go as I wanted it to go. But yeah, I'm trying to make a little bit of an effort to make this thing look good. So yeah, it just kind of makes sense to use the kind of wood that's in each compartment, right? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try and, uh, you know... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Repeat this along the way, but with the different kinds of wood. So, yeah, give me a mo. We'll see how it's looking. And as another iron golem bites the lava dust, we are now going to repair our axe because, as you can see, it's, like, dead. It is super dead. Even the little sprite, it looks, li it looks like a little knob axe. Yes. Let's go ahead and repair it, shall we? <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see what the supplies look like. 51. Okay, you see, I'm kind of thinking at this point that maybe that wild iron golem that's roaming around might just be affecting the rates we're getting. Although the question is, where the heck is he? <laughs> he's, uh, he's vanished. He died? Has he died? I don't know. I don't even know where he is. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think he might have died. I'm kind of hoping so because then we'll get the rates back. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. Alright guys, so after a nice little bed rest to get rid of the rain, because it's pesky, we have another progress update for you guys. Wow, look at how big this build is in comparison to this, uh, to this stone factory. <laughs> oh wow, this is like completely dwarfed by that now. <laughs> That is kind of insane. But anyways, guys, as you will be able to see, the interior is actually starting to take shape now. We have the oak compartment, the acacia compartment, the birch compartment, dark oak, the jungle, and of course, finally, the spruce compartment. And all is looking well, my friends. As you can see, there's even some various little bits and bobs starting to go into the chests from the, uh, from the logs that I have mined. So... You know, we're not doing bad, guys. We're not doing bad. And yes, I, I did shave off a bunch of leaves before. So, yeah, that's that's what that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, guys, it is all looking well. Now, obviously, you know, the, the next parts are probably the biggest parts to come, which is, you know, filling in the walls here, trying to figure out the roof design. One thing that came to mind, or, well, one thing that came to my mind is the idea that there isn't actually that much space between the top of this building and the iron farm up there. So it's going to have to be a very, very limited roof. I'm thinking something along the lines of sort of a, a warehouse style sort of curved roof kind of deal. I mean, the top of it, I'd really like to have made entirely out of glass because I think it would just look amazing as a bit of a tree greenhouse kind of deal. So yeah, in the meantime, it would be a nice idea to try and figure out what kind of design we want to go for with these walls here. Now, one thing we need to bear in mind, guys, is it needs to be full 
blocks ideally it needs to be full blocks the reason why that is is because if we used panes or anything like that that doesn't take up the full block we could have saplings drop onto the areas where the panes are and therefore they won't get picked up by the collection system so what i want you guys to do in the comments area below is i'd love for you guys to start suggesting what kind of wall designs we could be going for here i mean i'd be very interested to know what you guys have to suggest because as always i really value uh, your feedback and your suggestions on the series but in the meantime, my friends, I think we're going to leave this for today. We've made a good amount of progress with this place. And guys, the time has come. We are going to show you, or I am going to show you, the area in which we are going to start a new major project. So I'm going to clear out my inventory, and we're going to get this thing underway, my friends. Alrighty, guys, so here we are on top of our tower, and the new major Project location is actually over in this direction. Can you guys remember the days of Canopy City on my very, very old Python Plays Minecraft Let's Play? Well, that settlement was built at the start of Minecraft, so I didn't have a lot of things to my disposal. Whereas now, we're pretty much end game at this point, so we've got access to quite a lot of things. So, I thought it would be a very, very nice idea if we made Canopy City or Canopy Village version 2. I mean, obviously, the, the, it's not going to be called that. It's just going to be called Canopy City. But basically, the idea is, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is we're basically going to have an entire settlement, an entire village underneath the canopy here, right? And basically, yeah, it's going to look like a completely normal roofed forest biome from the top, but it's only when you go underneath, you start discovering all kinds of secrets. That is right, my friends. So, we are going to have a very, very fun time with this. I can I can feel it now, my friends. I'm feeling really, really good about this. Like, I am itching to get going with the first build underneath Canopy City. And, yeah, it's going to be a good time, my friends. There's even, like, little uh, lakes down here as well, which we can make into something. Like, it's a good time. We've got a plains biome over there in case we really wanted to expand outwards. Um, uh, you know, there's loads of things going on here, guys. There really, really is. Like, there's so much potential here. And I hope you guys are excited as I am to get this brand new project underway. Because it has been a while since we've had a brand new project. And, like I say, I'm hyped. I am hyped. Because the kind of style we're going for is one of my personal strongest styles. It's not going to be too dissimilar from Flora Valley. Except a bit darkened, a bit more sort of overgrown. We're going to be using like dark green. Well, not dark green. We're going to be using green stained glass, brown stained glass. We're going to have ourselves a bunch of leaves and foliage. And oh boy, is it going to be a good time, guys. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be using dark oak and cobblestone. And, you know, all the stuff that is my personal favorite things to build with. And yeah, basically, guys, what you're going to be seeing with this brand new settlement is where my strengths lie with building. It's going to be a good time, guys. It's going to be a super, super fun time. So I think maybe what we could do to finish off the episode is we come up with the block chart, the official block chart for Canopy City version 2, okay? So I'm going to go grab myself a bunch of resources and another iron golem is going to get killed. And yeah, guys, we're going to get over there. We're going to make a block chart. All right, guys, so here we are flying back over to the new project area, my friends. And what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a bit of a block chart, as I was saying. And we're also going to go ahead and get ourselves some, oh, some things going. Oh, jeez, okay. Uh, might be an idea to sleep because <laughs> I don't want to die here, man. No, 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 no. Right, there we go. Aha! Yes. Right, where's that zombie? Oh, hello. Hi, how are you doing there, buddy? Get wrecked and give me my five levels. Yep, there we go. Fantastic. Right, so here we go. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here, my friends. I think probably the first thing I want to do is uh, start setting down some uh, various bits and bobs. Uh, I would like that to be a double chest, please. There we go. Okay, uh, let's get the ender chest placed down as well. We'll get the valuables box out. And what I am looking for is this, because I would like to start smelting some of the cacti that I've got, right? be a good idea so uh boop, boop, and 
a little bit of boop boop right there as well. Okay, cool. So, as you can see, my friends, we have ourselves some brown stained glass here, which we can uh, use quite nicely. So, that will definitely be part of the block chart. Green glass is also going to be part of it, as is this white stained glass. Although, the white stained glass is going to be reserved for sort of, in air quotes, higher end build. Because white, in my opinion, is quite clean. Whereas, you know, you've got the dirty nature of the brown and the green uh, combined together. Uh, combine that with, you know, vines and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to have yourself a good time, my friends. You really, really are. So, yeah, we've got a good time, my friends. Like, I'm really looking forward to this. I really, really am. Like, to, to sort of revisit an old idea, but make it even better. Like, I honestly think that this is going to be a really, really cool thing. And like I said, I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this. So, uh, where should we put the block chart? Should we put it, like, over here? Like, there's a, there's a bunch of spaces. So, we've got the brown stained glass, as you can see. We've got ourselves some green stained glass, as you can see, going fairly well together there. And, of course, we will indeed have uh, white stained glass as well, but like I say, uh, much lesser used. And I've just realized I haven't got any white glass with me. Well, good job, Python. You're very prepared, aren't you? And here we go, my friends, the white stained glass, the final piece of the puzzle. Now, in terms of lighting, we're going to be using redstone lamps, and one of the other things I'm going to be doing is, if there are any gaps in the canopy above, I'm actually going to go ahead and manually fill them in all with leaves. Now, the idea is, in fact, can I just, I just want to kind of test this theory out. Right, okay, alright, I need a daylight sensor now. God, oh, gosh darn it, Python. Jeez, man. Aha! Okay, so I just wanted to uh, make sure my theory was correct. So even leaves, uh, they don't let the light through in terms of a night set, uh, you know, daylight sensor. So this is daytime setting. Uh, oh. What? Huh? So both settings are working? What? Okay, so it's not working now. It's not wor- oh. How weird. Okay, so apparently both settings are working. Maybe the, maybe the leaves sort of diffuse the light or they sort of lessen it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, okay, so we can use, we can use these, which is really, really cool. Oh, a little bit of a celebratory thing going on there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're also going to be using some of these things. That, oh, I didn't realize these connected. Ooh. That's pretty interesting. Okay, uh, we're going to be using Podzol in here as well. It just kind of makes sense, really. I mean, for example, if we put it down there, it just sort of fits, doesn't it? I mean, to me, it just makes sense. We've got the dark oak leaves here as well. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty easy stuffs, really. We've got the dark oak wood. We've got all of the different variants of stuffs. I'm also going to be going ahead and introducing a little bit of texture variation in the form of spruce wood. Now, the spruce wood is going to offer uh, a nice amount of contrast compared to uh, this going on here. So if I was to go ahead and put it like right next to it, uh, oh, let me pick it up. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the the do the do textures they just work. They just kind of work. They really really do. So that's pretty cool. And of course, let's not forget the slabs and stairs for the good old uh, dark oak wood as well. So yeah, like I say, those two sort of just go well together. We've got the glass going on. We've got lighting sorted out. And of course, we're having a bit of texture variation in the ground. So what about stones? We will indeed be using some stone in this build. And like I say, oh, gosh darn it. It's going to be a very sort of ye... A very sort of sort of overgrown, decrepit kind of deal. So we're going to be using a combination of cracked stone bricks, regular stone bricks. We've got some andesite in here. We are indeed also going to use the polished variant right there. Uh, solid stone, I'm not entirely sure that I'm wanting to use that. So I'm probably just going to convert that all into stone bricks. But then, of course, we've got ourselves the trusty old cobblestone with the slabs and stairs as well. And, of course, I've also decided to add a little bit of variation in the stairs with the stone bricks too. So, if I was to grab myself some vines, then we'll be putting in some mossy cobble in there, and also some uh, mossy stone brick. That'll also be part of the block chart. So, there we go. Got ourselves some vines from a nearby swamp biome. And talking of the swamp biome, the swamp biome that did have a witch hut is actually not that far away. It's about 100, maybe 200 blocks maximum away. So, that's pretty cool. But there we go. We've got the mossy variants of the stone brick and the cobblestone in there. And believe it or not, 
got, that is pretty much it. Like, the amount of builds we'll probably be able to make out of all of this is pretty insane. I mean, you know, this isn't all we can do either. Like, we can put in some coarse dirt down here. I don't know if we've got any gravel nearby, so I could actually test that theory. But to be honest with you guys, I, I kind of already know that coarse dirt kind of just works with everything you've got going. So, yeah, we've got the podzol. We're going to have ourselves the coarse dirt. We're going to be using uh, path blocks as well. And, yeah, we may have some different variants of leaves as well. And I don't know, man. There's just so many things. There's so many possibilities we could, uh, you know, that we could do with this uh, whole sediment. So, guys, like I say, I'm really, really excited because, honestly, this kind of block palette we've got going on here, this is where my strength lies in Minecraft in terms of building. So, like I say, I'm, I'm very excited. I really, really am. And I hope you guys are as well. So... Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and end the episode. But of course, before doing so, we've got the comment question of the video coming from ID Gaming. Hey, Python, you should turn fire tick off so that you can build more with the fire and make your builds even better. Love your vids. Keep up the great work. I appreciate the suggestion. I really do. And it's certainly not the first time someone has suggested turning off fire tick. Now, for those of you guys unaware, on Hermitcraft, for the longest time, we have always had fire tick turned off so people are free to use fire in their builds. But... This is a pure vanilla series, my friends. I mean, if you want to see me build with fire, then just go ahead and check out Hermitcraft Season 6. I mean, there might be a little information card on screen for you guys, so you can go and check it out. But uh, on this series, this is going to be pure vanilla Minecraft. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are like vanilla purists, like any kind of deviation away from vanilla, and it's like, oh man... I kind of don't like this. And I'm kind of the same in some ways. I really, really am. Like, I I don't think there's anything more satisfying than having something built in pure vanilla Minecraft. Like, no game rules changed, anything like that. Like, I honestly don't think there's anything more satisfying than having a build done in pure vanilla Minecraft. So, yeah. On that basis, we're going to be keeping Fire Tick on. And, you know, it kind of adds a bit of a, you know, added challenge in terms of building with fire or lava. So, you know, if we make mistakes, then we make mistakes. And we'll probably get a laugh out of it. So. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, please do be sure to drop a like rating. I mean, come on. If we could get some hype for this brand new project area in the way of like ratings, that'd be fantastic, guys. Hit the subscribe button. Ding that bell as well if you don't want to miss out on future content, folks. But for now, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to more of this project. I'm certainly looking forward to getting into it. I really, really am. So, for now, my friends, I bid you adieu. See you guys next time.